All right, welcome back on Africa Business Radio. It's Media Wednesday today and we've been having great conversations around the media. And of course, we're getting engagement from you on Twitter based on a question for today, which is, is the media space enabling for women? We've been getting your reactions, guys. And a lot of you are saying, yes, it is. 83% actually is agreeing to that fact that, yes, the media space is actually enabling. What 17% is feeling, okay, no, nah, not so much. Well, we'll move into our guest segment today. I am so excited about this one because, yes, it's still about media and, you know, women and opportunities in the media space. And I've got someone really very important. I'm so glad to meet her this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've got Obiajulu Olabisi Ugbo popularly known as BC Ubo. She's a certified life coach and neuro-linguistic practitioner from Olushola Lanry Coaching Academy in Nigeria, PDC coach and TV host of the popular Your View, a, a breakfast show on a uh, television and yes good morning great good to have morning. you here good morning <laughs> i'm happy to be here yes i'm glad that you could make it you know at just the right time actually so yeah the very first thought that comes to mind when your name is mentioned is award-winning singer mm. rapper ton <laughs> celebrity tv host on you know one of the most popular breakfast shows on television your view on tvc so tell us about your experience with these things Hmm. <laughs> That's deep. So mm. um, I think I was born to be an entertainer, um, mm. a natural when it comes to entertainment, different types of entertainment. As a teenager, I started because I had the height and the figure and the right. look. So anyone who sees me be like, ah, you should model, mm-hmm. you should model. Especially with um, Agbani Derego and um, Oluchi's win. Right. And any tall, slim girl on yeah. the road is likely to be a model. Try so, yes. So I started my entertainment showbiz in modeling and then afterwards uh, I did plenty, <laughs> numerous beauty pageants. I was a beauty queen on two counts. I won twice. Wow. Yes. Runner-ups and the other ones and um, after that, I got into the university. I did. I started school. I, I wanted to, you know, do something a bit serious so I could organize my life first, have like a foot in before going strictly into entertainment. So mm-hmm. I had a plan to uh, do a bit of work after school, which I did. I got a job as a teacher, mm-hmm. and then I had to do Montessori education with my political science qualification to, you know, for the teaching job. And I did that for five years, and it was time to go strictly into entertainment wow. but while i was teaching i had started singing so i started going to the studio i was recording i was ministering i started as a gospel artist mm. i was ministering in churches and then i was starting that career but after five years as a teacher classroom teacher i decided to step down <laughs> so i've learned two new things about you today you were a model yeah. And a teacher. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> you are also a certified life coach. Yes. You've helped lots of clients from across the country, you know, helping them discover and achieve their goals in life. Tell us more about that. Okay. So I've always loved to help people. I've always loved to uh, talk know help people solve their problems but i I didn't know it was going to lead me into life coaching Mm. so um i I know that growing up uh even as a young girl i had a lot of friends a lot of family members who would have life problems who would have relation especially relationship problems and they they want to talk to bc and i'm like what is it that i have (laughs) that i maybe i don't know Mm because i was young but you know they hear me talk and they say you sound more experience than your age Mm. you have more wisdom than young girls your age and so even my stepmothers would run into problems and they want to talk to me you know so i've always had that then um when i stopped uh, teaching i started you know doing seminars talking to young people who are about to get married talking to you know just putting out nuggets here and there Mm -hmm. here and there and then i met someone who happened to be a life coach like the actually the catalyst like the biggest life coach you hear of in nigeria Mm. and then it was like you have a gift you have a gift you need to come 
and have a qualification to back up this gift. Right. You're going to go far. And so I registered for OLCA and I was trained for it. I did the life coaching certification. I did the NLP uh, certification and other certifications. And then I had to start coaching, like real coaching with the tools of coaching and everything. I was able to coach about 50 clients, you know, for free for mm. my assignments and yes. homework. And then when I was done with that, I was qualified to start coaching. Now I do it and I'm really, I'm really happy <laughs> that I'm able to help. Because when I hear testimonies of people who have coached, I'm like, thank God you did this for yes. me. Thing. I, I feel like I'm doing the right thing. You know, thing. sometimes it's just we need people who just see something that we have mm. and just push us yes, to, indeed. you know, grab it. I wouldn't have known. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you're doing great things, honestly. And a lot of women are doing great things, especially the past couple of years. Mm. We've seen promising increase in the number of women entrepreneurs that are stepping out into mm. the spotlight, especially small homegrown businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, many of them have flourished despite what went on last year with the pandemic, job losses, working mm -hmm. from home. And a lot of persons have uh, accredited all of this to the media, mm -hmm. social media. We're mm -hmm. able to do this because the media was there for us yeah. to, you know, her nurse and all of that. So, um, but just before you let us into your different businesses because I know you're into <laughs> not one not two about four huge businesses yes. that you're currently handling yeah tell us please what being a business owner means to you and why you even became an entrepreneur in the first place okay my need to solve uh, problems I've always loved to solve problems. I've always loved to step in and provide solution. I'm very solution oriented. So when I see there's a need somewhere, there's a gap somewhere, I'm always likely to be the person who wants to fill that gap. I want everybody to be okay. Mm. Um, I want people to be happy. I'm 90% of the time a happy person, except yeah. when the mood swings come. <laughs> but 90% right. of the time. So I like people around me to be happy. And if there's any way that I can help them you know get to that level of happiness i always do mm. so um and the fact that i also love to make money i love to be empowered as uh, a, a woman i want to I, I wouldn't want to you know meet my husband for everything like mm. i want to buy the undies yeah. the lingerie the matches in the kitchen you want our money to be our money <laughs> <laughs> yeah his money is our money but, your but money i should is your make money, my right? money now you saw me i didn't say that <laughs> you know so um um uh, be, having that sort of mindset where yeah. I wanted to be empowered, I wanted to be financially independent, I decided to go into businesses. I love to buy and sell, mm. even as a young girl. I love to buy and sell. So I said, okay, what, what, what is that thing that I would buy that people want to buy from me? Mm -hmm. And that's how I got into my hair business. I've always known good hairs. I've always worn good hairs. So why don't I just sell it and, you know, make something? Mm. And I actually started this business in the midst of the lockdown in March. Oh. Yes. Uh, during the COVID-19, where a lot of people were losing their jobs and people were losing their businesses and people weren't able to do business. I started my business in the midst of the lockdown. Uh, the fashion business was there for a bit, uh, but then I had to stop because I, I used to ship with uh, a particular company, but they had a problem. Okay. And so I halted the business. But then I said, okay, now that I'm on TV, people will see more of me. Why don't I revamp this business True. and start it again since I still have an interest there? And that's how I revamped my house of BC. Mm. I'm actually wearing my Adriwe t-shirt. Oh, I love morning. that. It Thank is so you. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Did you come on extra? Yeah. Or? No, I didn't. I have to go <laughs> you have check to out BC. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> and get that's mine. how I started that. Now, the media business, I've been doing that all the while I was are singing yeah yeah so it housed my media it housed my presenting on tv mm. and i'm going into i've actually started i'm a filmmaker now uh we're hoping to get the movie in wow. the cinema this, sometime this year are you gonna get like punch lines before you leave no i ain't <laughs> dropping no vibes <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right so i mean as you said earlier you took advantage of last year while businesses were closing up and mm. people were staying at home and not knowing what to do you took advantage so how did you re-strategize for 2020 and even into you know the new year as a business owner what role if any, did the media play in keeping your business afloat? Okay, uh, social media was very, very, very pivotal to my business being afloat and thriving because, you know, 
uh, with the traditional media, you needed to spend a lot doing advertisements for people to see your business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you need that to have like a physical store for people to come and purchase, you know. And so there were a lot of limitations for young people who wanted to start business. You need money to get to pay your rent. Mm -hmm. You need money to get, you know, you have to pay the taxes and all of that. And even if you want to advertise, you have to go and pay television houses, True. radio houses. Yeah. And you know how they cut your head now. You are in the <laughs> business. You understand what people do to us. But <laughs> God is oh watching my. all of you. But oh social my. media came and everybody could have a voice. Yeah. It gave everyone a voice. It gave everyone an opportunity. You just need a very good smartphone, clear camera, and mm. then your products are out there and people are asking. Now, people are actually taking advantage of this to defraud people. I was a victim recently. Mm -hmm. Since the 21st of November, I paid someone for a product until today I haven't gotten it. I'm taking it up legally. Mm -hmm. I'm working on that now. So, but for those people who are legit, it was an opportunity for them to showcase what they had. And we are actually getting lazier in terms. I don't do physical shopping. Okay. You won't see me getting into the shop to or open market and all that. So mm -hmm. I rely mostly on the internet to Online be able to buy groceries and purchases and clothes and whatever it is yeah. that I need online. So it was an opportunity for people who knew how to leverage on it. Now the problem is a lot of young people are carried away with the social media, the TikTok, the, and they're all there playing and wasting their time. Yeah, so you can make a whole lot of money. Exactly. So for any, even if I'm dancing in my posts, I'm targeting people to come and buy my You know, I don't do anything free on social Nothing media. Is free Nothing on social is free. Media. Is free. Yeah. Exactly. Especially my, in 2021. I'm coaching, I'm marketing <laughs> my, you know, my clothes or yeah. my hair. I'm doing something, True. you know, that will bring money into my pocket. So, uh, social media is good. Mm -hmm. I just pray that young people will realize this power and use it more positively for their business. Right. And, and if you study the impact of financial success of women entrepreneurs globally, you find that much of it can be linked to unlocking opportunities opportunities online as you've mentioned yes. and taking advantage of you know trainings in fact that is like vital at this point and mm. this brings me to my next question about bc and brains book club wow. tell me more <laughs> about that okay now before i jump into that you mm. mentioned uh, taking advantage of training so mm -hmm. as a life coach i put out uh, several trainings i mm -hmm. have one for this saturday goal setting and smashing masterclass for this saturday for this saturday virtual right yeah virtual it's going to be on zoom so for business people uh you must have a plan you okay. must set a goal for your business you must set a, a short-term goal a long-term goal but a lot of people feel mm, it doesn't matter i can just start and just be moving and then you find out that you are going around in circles mm -hmm. and you do not have a plan if you don't know where you're going to you just be wasting your time but the sure. goal setting helps you to understand where you need to be and walk to what's you know being there if it's uh, something that has to do with your daily you know just put in the work if it's daily if it's weekly if it's mm. monthly that will lead you to your goal now for bc and brains book club um i realized that young people these days don't like to read i grew up being a voracious reader mm -hmm. i would go to the i had a spot in the library back in delta state as a young girl that just finished um uh secondary school i'll go there in fact the days i don't come when i come the next day the library attendants yeah that, we didn't see you yesterday it was that mm -hmm. bad you know i'll go there i'll get books I didn't have a direction on what sort of books to read, but I was more into storybooks. So yeah. I'll get books, I'll read. And it helps, you know, develop my uh, ability to speak. So when, I, when I'm when i having a conversation with people who are way older than me, they're looking, they're expecting me to sound a different way. And I'm mm -hmm. sounding a different way. And they're like, ah, where do you get all these things from? They didn't know I was getting it from books. So I realized that a lot of young people no longer paid attention to reading. In fact, it's so painful that when I'm having a chat with you and you you, you, you chat me with abbreviations as a young person, I, I block you. It can you. be frustrating. If I like it, annoying. I warn you, Sha. <laughs> Please, can you spell your words? Mm. You know, I, I feel like people are just so lazy when it comes to reading. So I decided to, okay, since I love to read, I want to encourage people to read. So I'm going to start up a book club where I'll pick a book that will read personal development books mm -hmm. that will help you develop yourself in your life, your business, your career, uh, social, mental, and all that. And I'll pick that book, we'll read it, we'll spread it, mm -hmm. we'll share share it, we'll read it and we'll review it every Friday. So you'll hear from this person here mm -hmm. and their perspectives on the book. 
and it will help people. And it started like a joke. <laughs> like, I didn't even have a plan for it when it started. Mm. And then I realized that people were coming in gradually and they were being uh, informed and they were happy about it. And um, we're over a year now, wow. two years, close to two years now. And um, I think I have about 70 something active members of the book club. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Now, just before we get on to um, an other parts of the conversation. Now, you mentioned that there's something coming up this Saturday. I'm sure people want to be a part of that. How yeah, do they get it's on? It's my training. So, Goal Setting and Smashing Masterclass mm-hmm. will be holding this Saturday. Uh, it's going to be about two, two and a half hours uh, where I'll be helping people break down their goals, break down their plans, identify what it is that they want to achieve. A lot of people don't even have an idea. So, it's going to be like uh, almost like a one-on-one session. Okay. And I'm deploying the tools that I have from my life coaching, from the catalyst himself. If you want the catalyst to train you for, mm. <laughs> you know, you, you are going to pay like hundreds of thousands. Right. And I'm going to be using his tools. I am actually uh, licensed to use his tools mm. to help people set goals that will work this year 2021 Mm. so uh i think people should just uh send me what go on my dm okay send me a whatsapp message or go on my dm just bc ubo on instagram okay send me a message i'll take it from there claire it's not free it's not free okay (laughs) you just give them the terms and conditions when they (laughs) slide into your dm so i mean women have been reaching amazing heights doing amazing stuff this year i mean over the past months it's been lots of record-breaking achievements i mean talking about the just concluded u.s elections we have yeah. the VP Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. We have um, uh, the, the cool. Janet Yellen heading the Treasury Department, yeah. and just recently we had our very own in Nigeria, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, yeah. as you know, formally signed in as the DG of uh, the World the Trade too. Organization. Yeah. Even though there were questions about what if this was the Nigerian Trade Organization, would she have emerged as a woman? You know, so there were questions around that. So at the end of the day, it's more than just women putting themselves out there Mm. it's also um, has to do with acceptance and you know bridging the gap between male and female participation Mm. in media in key economic roles in Mm. politics and all of that where do you see nigeria in all of this i think this is largely patriarchal society but Mm. we're hoping that things will change Um, a lot of people are becoming aware a lot of men are actually becoming aware you know sometimes um, you do things not because you really understand why you do it but because you've inherited it from your fathers and your father's fathers Mm -hmm. but uh, I have conversations with a lot of men and I see that some of them are becoming very supportive of the uh, women folk Um, we have husbands now who support their wives to go to any length unlike we used to have before Mm -hmm. Uh, we mostly then you, you your, your your job as a woman is to be a wife yes. and be a mother and stay in the kitchen and not have a life outside your family. In fact, your family defines now. you. And no matter how successful you are as a woman, because if you don't have a man over your head, they see you as a failure. Mm-hmm. Or if you're not able to keep a home, they see you as a failure. Forgetting that it's not just the woman's responsibility to keep the home. It, it's two of us. It's True. a partnership. So if I have failed in keeping my home, you have failed as well as the man. Mm-hmm. So so I think that the media is actually helping. Uh, it's bringing to the fore. It's bringing, we're having conversations on how women can be more empowered, how women can be uh, supported, how women can be pushed, you know, to get to those heights. We have a lot of talented uh, uh, um, hardworking, smart women who can take up positions and handle them effectively. But what sort of support do they have? Even the women, do they support the women? Mm. That's the thing. Because um, I remember when I contested for a political position in my class, it was the women that voted against me. Mm. <laughs> Not even the men. <laughs> So we need to ask ourselves, I mean, as much as we're saying, I, you know, sometimes eh, I would rather work with a man than a woman. I hear a lot of yes, person say that. And it's not supposed to be so. Thank you. So the problem is not basically the men most of the time, it's the women. Mm. They support each other. There's always this bickering and always this jealousy of she can't be more than me. And, mm. you know, so it, it doesn't take us far. But the men, when you see the men walking hand in hand, they work well together. They mm-hmm. support each other. So I think, aside from blaming the men for not supporting the women to go far, let us ask the women the same questions. Are you going to support your sister who you know has, you know, the capacity to handle that job? You or are know? you going to pull her down because she's a woman? 
Let's start. Um, thought provoking. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, in your opinion now, uh, what do you think the impact of having more women in decision making positions in the media organizations would be? Mm. Not just media now, say yeah. political and political, all around. business, yes. all around. Okay, so I think women have good foresight and vision because uh, they come from a place of uh, nurturing. You know, when, when you're when you're raising children, when you, when you have maternal hair, let me use the word maternal instincts. It helps mm. you see beyond. The men are more likely straight jackets, you yes. know. But the woman would, because her tentacles have spread, she would see more from different aspects than the man. And it's like, let me use this, like a mother who doesn't necessarily need to be close to the child to know that something is wrong with this child. There's this thing we feel like yes. something is wrong with my child in school and I'd like, I'm not comfortable. I want to talk to this child, mm-hmm. like, you know? So when it comes to uh, decision making, I have realized that women who support their men in marriages go very far because while you're make, taking that decision and feeling is just one way, the woman has seen some other things that you're not seeing. She doesn't know how to explain it. True. That's how she's been blessed. So when women are given the opportunity. Okay, let me not use the word given. When women f- get the opportunity, when they fight for the opportunity, so mm-hmm. let's not just chill and wait for people to pick us and put us in positions. Let us ask ourselves, do we want to be in those positions? We should fight for those positions. Make so we move. have the capacity to be in those positions. So mm-hmm. when women are in leadership positions all over the world, it's going to impact more positively Mm. uh we're going to be able to handle issues better so when it comes to lawmaking uh somebody will not just sit in the house of assembly uh, making laws about people local people who are living in this area come and clear them come and do this a woman would understand what they are going through in those areas and make those laws appropriately I can't disagree and support with you. you to make those laws appropriately. So, women in position, uh, I've seen organizations that are head by women, and I know how far they go. I really know how far they go. So, I think women should take up these opportunities. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't leave it. Don't leave your your. What will I call it now? Your people say your glory. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't leave your glory because you're married. And say, ah, let me just let me just focus on I've been raising these children and mm-hmm. everything. You're gonna be raising a girl too, who tomorrow will say, ah, after all, my mother left her own uh, uh, dreams and aspirations and raised me. Okay, it's time for me to raise my, my own. own and, you know, uh, we just you know? have this. And it keeps going around in circles. We want to go and grab our opportunities, get out yeah, of the house and do other things, things, you know. Yeah. So let's get back to you now. In 2019, <laughs> in 2019, you hit something really big in your career. You won the TV personality of the year. How did that make you feel? Okay, I was excited about it. I think it's perfect, but mm. being put in a live show where you don't have that opportunity to retake anything whatever comes out of your mouth stays with you mm. uh it's it's a lot of work so when i got that uh, nomination first of all uh tv personality of the year i was like hey what did they see <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what is it that i saw and then i got the award and i was like hmm and then over time i started getting comments that we always knew you had the potential. You're getting better now. You're doing it better now. We like your perspectives. Mm-hmm. You're bold. You're blunt. You say it as it is. We love your style. I'm like, okay. There is nothing <laughs> better than a pat at the back yes. at the right time. So Especially like, when you feel like, <gasps> am I really doing the right thing, as yes. you said? And then you're just being recommended mm. and being applauded is amazing. Yeah, it is. It so is. you're a wife. You're a mother. You're yeah. a businesswoman. You're a career a woman. Being you're <laughs> <laughs> a lot is going on. How do you balance all of this? And still look this beautiful. <laughs> Planning. Planning. And Planning. delegation. So I've realized that for me to succeed in doing, because, okay, so for some people, uh, they've been gifted in doing just one thing. And, mm. you know, they have all the time to put in all the energy and focus on that one thing. But I've been gifted in many things. And um, I will be denying myself if I just stick to one thing it's not going to work it's not my kind of person that's not how I was created Mm. so I needed to find how to do them and do them well you know uh you know growing up they'll tell you uh jack of all trade master of none it was a lie there was nothing like there's nothing like jack of all trade did you hear about the proverbs 31 woman 
How many things was she doing? <laughs> a whole verse dedicated to one dedicated woman. Dedicated to one woman. She was industrious, mm. you know. And um, she was a master in everything because mm-hmm. because of her, people would praise her husband at the gate. Mm-hmm. So that jack of all, I don't know whoever came up with that cliche that everybody was using at the time. And they wanted to use it to put me in a box. And I had to like, mm-mm. I've understood myself. I wasn't meant to do one thing. Mm. But what I can guarantee you is that whatever I put my hands into, I will turn it to gold. I'm going to be excellent at it. And how do I plan to do this? Knowing that we all just have the same 24 hours Mm. is a lot of planning. So I plan, I focus on this project. And when I'm done, I move on to the next. So I'm not putting my hands in everything at the same time. At the same time. I have a time where I dedicate for this. Wrap up the project. Okay, keep it. We're coming back to you. Mm -hmm. I go to the next one do the project and wrap it up or coming back to you i shot a movie in um that was august last year as um my movie Mm -hmm. like i was an actor and the executive producer wow we wrapped up that now the next time we're going to touch it is for the promotion so that it goes on cinema and all of that Mm -hmm. so i've done that i've kept it so imagine if i waited to just be only an actor and i know how the jobs come it's once mm. in a while you get a script i don't even have time to go for auditions anymore so i, I wait till i get referrals and oh, this person is good and i get a script so if i had stayed to just be an actor i know a lot of actors who are out there begging money because they can't survive they don't have anything else they're just waiting to do that one thing that they can do but while i'm waiting for the scripts to come i'm doing business i'm Mm -hmm. selling hair i'm selling clothes and i'm focusing on i'm I'm coaching people i'm helping people i'm growing i'm even actually doing my masters as it is but Mm -hmm. it's planning so (laughs) i and i delegate things that i don't really have to be involved in everything I don't really have to be the one to go into the market to buy the meat for the soup in the house and everything. When I have somebody who can do it well, I pay you and you do it. Good. So I can focus on taking care of my husband and my mm-hmm. children mm-hmm. while you're in the mm-hmm. market. Mm-hmm. So a lot of delegation. Yeah. I, de- I wouldn't delegate my husband. <laughs> no, I won't do that. <laughs> so I do the ones that I want to do yes. that are more important to me. And the little menial jobs. I, ha- I can't remember the last time I swept my house. Mm. It, I mustn't sweep the house to be a good wife. (laughs) If you can pay to get it done, then... Thank you. You know, just get it done. Thank you. I only get into the... I I, I used to love... I I love cooking, Mm. you know, but I only... These days, I only get into the kitchen when maybe I just want to give them a treat in the house. That's when I get into the kitchen. But for me to be cooking, those cooking I did those days, back to back, and sweating, and no, there's no time. I have things to read. (laughs) You know, you can be much more productive. I mean, now more than ever, it's time to get into a lot of things Mm. and get them, you know, running really well. You can't just be focused on one thing at this. In 2021, no. That can't work in 2021. 2021. So, do you have any new... I know you've told us about your project in August last year. Do you have any new project coming up? Uh what's the future for your career mm-hmm. and all of that oh there's a lot so um i'm strictly going into my uh, movie productions i'm just waiting to get this one running mm-hmm. so that i can start the next projects we're already working i have my team that i'm going to be working with so we're making plans in that direction uh, my hair business is growing mm-hmm. i'll be branding my hairs very soon uh, but let, i'm waiting for covid so I, so I can go to china and you know get wow. the deal and all of that and i have other things that are coming up so I'm taking them one day at a time. Right. Now, just before I let you go, um, of course, you've given a whole lot of encouragement and advice. I mean, I've learned planning. If you must get a lot of things done, you need Delegation. to plan. And you need to get uh, more than one stuff going on right now. I've learned that too. But then any other word of encouragement for young aspiring women who want to grow and excel in the media industry or any other business entre- uh, entrepreneurship space or anything else that they want to get into? You know, word of advice. Okay, so um, I I would use the word that I fell into TV. I I, I didn't plan to get into TV when I got into TV, but there was something I lived by, which was always be ready Mm. for any opportunity. I'm someone who sees an opportunity and I can take it immediately. While people are still struggling to like understand what is happening here, I've taken Mm. that opportunity. So what I tell young people who I mentor is you need to be prepared. Don't wait for the job to come before you now start getting yourself ready, reading up about it, doing be prepared. And it it, it taught me that as a a runway model and as a beauty queen, you don't know when you'll be called up to come and do your catwalk. So you Mm. always need to rehearse and practice and be ready and be prepared. So um 
I could be doing this now. Somebody just calls me up and give me uh, and decides to give me a political position. I am prepared. Like it's not in my line. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not seeing it, but I'm prepared. I, mm. I have the capacity to. I am. I am reading up. I am. You know, uh, working. I am following people. I'm getting mentorship from people. I, I'm just prepared for anything that comes. And if you want to go far in life, you can't be caught sleeping on a bicycle. At all. That's the word that I use. At you all. must be prepared. You must have a plan to go further. You may not exactly see where you're going for people who have so many things they're doing. They say, cast your bread upon the waters and mm-hmm. <laughs> tomorrow you won't know the one that will come up. You know? But if you are in that space where you are gifted with a lot of things, I would advise you to always be ready. Any opportunity can come and learn to identify opportunity. It could come as come and do it for free. When I started on TV, I wasn't paid. I was going there for free. They would bash my car on the road. I would still be going. And people would be asking me, they're not even paying you. Why are you What's going? The point? What's the point? You're just wasting time. But young people these days want money, 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 money first. Quick money. Quick money first. So mm. if there's no money you're paying, they are tired. <laughs> When you need to grow, you need to learn to volunteer. If it's something that you enjoy doing, you can do it for free for a number of years. It doesn't matter. You're building capacity. You're learning. You're growing. And all of that. When I did my radio show, before I got on TV, I had my radio show, Love Angles with BCU with Gospel Temer Radio. And it was for free as well. I was going there. And somebody was like, "Uh -uh, you talk so well on radio. You can be on TV. You have Mm -hmm. the looks. You can be on TV. And that's how it came. You know? So if I had said, let me stay in my house till somebody comes to pick. Nobody knows you. Mm -hmm. You need to build your CV as a young person. If you are in school, it's okay. You can do volunteer work while in school to build your capacity True. identify a company around that you want to work with and tell them i want to come for free i want to work you build your cv as you're graduating school your cv is it's loaded. already ready and loaded you know so honestly it takes a, lot a lot of work but you gotta do it young people need to learn i just hope they're all listening right now honestly <laughs> because people are just in for how much is it are they yes, paying me are they pay me how much are they who will take me? care of my um <laughs> tifa and all of that yeah. please do i don't have time for that but please we need yeah. to learn to have foresight I think that's one thing we are blessed with as women. We need to look ahead Ahead. and know when an opportunity is Mm. an opportunity. If you're blind to it, I'm not sure how you're going to grab it. Amazing time with you. (laughs) I don't want to go, but we have to draw the curtain (laughs) at this point. Thank you so much, Busy, for making it on the Breakfast Connect show. I do hope you'll be available when we need you for further conversations. No problem. All right. And that uh, is our guest, (laughs) Obia Jalu Alabisi Ugo, uh, popularly known as BC. Uh, She's a certified life coach and neurolinguistic practitioner from Alushala Center. Olushola Lanre Coaching, Coaching Academy, Academy in Nigeria. She's also a TV host of the popular breakfast TV show Your View. So she has shared her view <laughs> in my show. space on my show this morning. <laughs>